In this video, I'm going to be showing you about linear momentum and impulse. So the very first thing to start with is linear momentum. Now, I mean linear because there's different types of momentum. We can have things like linear momentum, but we also have things like angular momentum. There's all sorts of different kinds. But I'm going to start with just linear momentum. Now, linear implies just a straight line. And we have an equation, first of all that can actually uh, help us to define things. So it goes like this, P equals MV, where P is the momentum. So this here is the main equation we need. Okay, so that right there, that's the momentum. We'll be able to figure out the units in a second. Now uh, we have M, of course, is the mass, and that's measured in kilograms. Then we have V, whoops, that's a bad K there, there we go. So V, that's just the velocity. And that velocity is measured in meters per second. So there we go. So what's the momentum measured in then? It doesn't have its own special units, but if you just know how it's defined here, so we have mass, well that's units of kilograms, and we have velocity, which has units of meters per second. So momentum then must be measured in kilograms, because that's these things, times meters per second. So that's the units for linear momentum. Now, uh, like I said, momentum is a vector, which means you normally have to say what direction it is. And we can have different units as well. I'm going to show you an alternate unit in just a second here. So it turns out we can also say, uh, or we can say Newton seconds as well. There's lots of different ways of saying it, but these are the, these are the main ones. Now, when is it used? You know, so what do we use linear momentum for? Well, it's often used uh, to tell us about things like collisions or even explosions or things like that. So uh, it's useful uh, for telling us about collisions and explosions. Um, not just those, of course, but uh, it's especially, at least in physics classes, used for collisions. So that means two things run into each other. So maybe we have, you know, one thing comes in like this, another thing comes in like this. So this is some object and some other object. And when they meet, what happens to them? Well, it all depends if they stick or if they bounce or if they sort of half stick and half bounce. But basically, we can use momentum. It turns out we can use what's called conservation of momentum in order to help us to predict where different things will go. So if we know that, you know, let's say this object and this object run into each other and they bounce, and if I know the direction um, and velocity, well, sorry, if I know the direction and speed of one of the objects afterwards, it turns out I can work out what the other one does. So this can help us a lot in collisions. So that's linear momentum. Now there's another thing though that we can use, and it's actually very closely related, and it's called impulse. Now the impulse uh, it has a letter I to denote it here. Now the impulse, um, it can be defined a few different ways. One of the ways is just by calling it F delta T. Um, that tells us something about the force and a change in time. But we also have a version that goes M delta V. So this is the equation or equations for impulse. So I equals impulse. We'll define the units in a second here. So we have F. Uh, oh, by the way, impulse is a vector, uh, force is a vector, and velocity is a vector. Should be careful here. So F, well, that, of course, equals the force. And that force is measured in newtons. Now we have delta T. That's just some sort of time, or a change in time, or a difference in time. And that's going to be seconds. M, of course, is mass. And V is, of course, velocity. So that's the same thing as we had here. So we have mass and velocity like we had before, except this time it's mass times change in velocity. So I guess we'll say that. So delta V, that's equal to change in velocity. So that tells us, you know, starts off at a certain speed, finishes at another speed. Remember, the word velocity just implies a direction. So that's that. Now, how can we then define impulse? Well, impulse will then have units of, well, let's see here. Um, maybe I'll actually be able to just pick it up and move it. I think I need a bit more space. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Um, I would actually like to pick up all of this. 
Oh, it's not going to let me. Isn't that nice? Um, that's fine. So if I look at this then, I can do the units for impulse. It's going to be, well, units of F, which is newtons, times units of delta T, which is seconds. Or I could also say units of M, which is kilograms, times delta V, which is units of meters per second. Now look very carefully at these units, kilogram meters per second. Look back at this one here, where we had momentum was in kilogram meters per second. And remember I said it's gonna be or Newton seconds. And the reason why is right here. Turns out impulse and momentum are very closely related because impulse is nothing but a change in momentum. So sometimes I like to rewrite this as I equals delta P. In other words, the impulse equals a change in momentum. That's, I think, a really nice way to look at it here. So we could say that the impulse is a change in momentum. So of course it has units of momentum. I mean, it makes sense then. If impulse is a change in momentum, see, that's m delta v. If we just had m v, that would be just momentum. But we have m delta v. That implies a change in something. Now, the mass doesn't change, we're assuming, so that's why we say delta v here. And of course, elf delta t, well, that's something useful for us. But there's a few extra little points I'd like to um, well, point out. Sorry for the pun there. But uh, we have this. If we have i equals f delta t, I want to show you something. I want to show you a graph. So what if we have a graph of a force over time? So, of course, this force would be in newtons and this time would be in the seconds. Well, it turns out if you have some sort of collision happening or some sort of thing going on, um, so maybe, I don't know, maybe we have um, some force that goes you know, straight across, all of a sudden it goes down, all of a sudden it goes across again. So let's say this means you apply a force here, and after a certain time you apply less force, and then you apply that same different but lesser force here. If that was the case, it turns out you can figure out the um, impulse and therefore the change in momentum in something by looking at this graph. Now what I like to do is when I look at a graph, a key feature that I like to teach students is that, well, there's only basically three main things we tend to do with graphs, at least in uh, high school level uh, physics and even math. One thing we can do is tell the y-intercept. That's sometimes useful. Another thing we can do with a graph is find the slope or the gradient. Remember, that would be just, you know, picking a point and picking another point and finding the rise over run. In other words, the delta y over delta x for that thing. And if I did a slope, look at the units carefully. I would do units of these things over these things. In other words, I'd have f over t. And take a look at this, f over t. No, that's not this. Another thing I can do, however, is take the area under a curve. And if I do that, I mean, if you remember how to take the area, let's say I wanted the area under this curve from, I don't know, here to here, let's just say. Let's just say I wanted that area right here. If I wanted that area, that would be units of, well, length times width or, you know, height times length. It depends how you want to define it. But it's basically these things times these things. In other words, I'd have things with F times things with T. Do you notice that's like F times T? So what this tells you is this, that the impulse, remember, therefore, the change in momentum is equal to the area under a force versus time graph. So that's something really useful because then you can have some sort of collision or some sort of thing happening and you can figure out the impulse. So now, um, how is this actually useful? This is actually very, very useful. It helps us for a lot of things. So actually, I'm just going to continue on here. So.